While Usopp and Van Auger may be one of the most obvious matchups for the Straw Hats and Blackbeard Pirates, the meaning behind their fight will go far beyond just a battle of the snipers. Because since the end of the East Blue, Whoop Slap has had us wondering whether Luffy's journey is truly due to his dream or his fate. And while we know Luffy and Blackbeard are all about their dreams, I think it's clear that Usopp and Van Auger are clearly Oda's examples of fate. Auger has mentioned fate nearly every single time he's ever appeared in the story. And even in his introduction, he mentioned that fate is a result of your daily good and bad deeds. He was also seen right next to Blackbeard and Jaya, where Teach even joked about how it was weird Augur failed to mention fate. And one definition of the word Augur is literally to foretell things based on omens. As for Usopp, what better example of fate could there be than someone whose lies are almost destined to come true? He almost creates his own fate by telling tall tales that he eventually gets to live out. These two snipers are the perfect juxtaposition to their captains who are the ultimate embodiment of dreams. So I want to use this video as a chance to dig into why fate is so important, how it tells us how their fight will go down now that Augur has the warp warp fruit, and why it will also likely crown the next sniper king. And as much as I'd love to dive right in, 86% of you amazing and intelligent people who've watched my videos over the last month may have forgotten to hit subscribe last time you were here, so you know what to do. But when it comes to dreams and fate in the context of One Piece, and particularly with Luffy because of his newfound sun god Nika powers, that could be worthy of an entire video on its own. But just to summarize how I view it, dreams are an outcome you wish to happen and work to manifest it into reality, while fate almost prescribes the opposite, that a certain future is already destined to happen. A dream almost makes it so you are the force willing a certain outcome to happen, while fate is thought to happen beyond a person's control. Luffy and Blackbeard are clearly two sides of the same coin when it comes to pursuing dreams, but Usopp and Augur are two sides of the same coin for fate. Augur is constantly assessing fate's role in whatever he's involved in, while Usopp prescribes his own fate through the lies that he tells. And I think there's a very obvious reason why Oda chose the snipers to embody fate specifically, because shooting a gun, or a slingshot for that matter, is a perfect microcosm of how fate works. The reason for this is that the instant that a shot leaves the sniper's hands, you could say that it's fated to land in a certain spot spot, even before it actually does. The wind and other forces may affect it on its way, of course, but regardless, the destination is kind of predetermined the instant it's in the air. And that is exactly what the best snipers try to predict. They try to assess all the forces of the world, like wind speed and direction, drop off of their gun at that distance, and things like that so they can get the outcome that they want. They don't ignore those forces of the world, they recognize them and account for them. To Augur, we are basically all bullets destined for a certain certain destination, and he's trying to figure out what those destinations are. He feels like fate is guiding everyone somewhere already, but people like Luffy and Blackbeard want to choose their own path. That's why Augur is constantly assessing how fate is affecting whatever he is doing. But Usopp almost flips that idea on its head, where he is the one guiding fate itself. When he lies about something, it's like the world almost conspires to make it actually happen. Like he's driving the winds of fate, or he at least has a crazy natural for inherently knowing where the world will take him. Either one of those is possible, but it probably has to be one of the two. We will cover this in more detail later, but there's actually another reason why Usopp and Augur are the perfect juxtapositions of fate to their captains, Luffy and Blackbeard. And that's that both Usopp and Van Augur kind of act as a second captain, despite having a lower rank in the crew. And both of them may have even opposed their crew at some point. Now, don't get me wrong, right? Zoro and Sanji are clearly the wings of the Pirate King. But Usopp Usopp has literally gone by Captain Usopp, he often acts like he is leading 8,000 men, and he's also the one to stand up to Luffy and fight him over the Mary. And while we don't have a ton of information on Blackbeard's crew since we don't see them all too often, Augur was shown right next to Blackbeard in the middle of the panel when we first saw their crew together in Jaya. He was also trusted with going to Whole Cake with just Aokiji, who is somewhat of a new recruit, and most importantly, this could actually tie to John Augur, the real life pirate that Van Auger is based on. So John Auger was a fairly famous pirate in his own right, but the real story to write home about here is that he was put on trial and judged by another pirate named Josiah Burgess, who is obviously the pirate that Jesus Burgess is based on, the current first Titanic captain for Blackbeard. The way that Josiah Burgess got on that trial was that he surrendered to King George and took a pardon. And in doing so, he actually managed to meet up with the real-life pirate Blackbeard while traveling with some
some trading goods. But after that, he was tasked with judging several pirates, including none other than John Augur, who was eventually hung as a result of this. I'm not sure exactly how much Oda will dive into this, but it is uncanny that the pirate who inspired Blackbeard's first commander judged the pirate who inspired Blackbeard's sniper, because the Straw Hat's de facto first commander, being Zoro, judged the Straw Hat's sniper, being Usopp, back in Water 7. Zoro was the one to step in and say that Usopp couldn't rejoin until he apologized. Maybe Blackbeard's crew went through something similar with their ship, the Saber of Zebek, and that's how Oda will parallel this judgment between Josiah Burgess and John Augur. While Usopp wanted to keep the Mary, maybe Augur once wanted to get rid of the Saber of Zebek. Because while we know that's Blackbeard's main ship, we have never seen it one single time in the story. His crew is usually just riding a log raft or something. But the point here is just that Augur and Usopp kind of have very important roles as almost a foil to their captain. But the similarities don't end there, because Oda even updated their post time skip designs in a pretty similar way, by giving them both some facial hair. So before they let the rest of their hair get out of hand, I had to recommend the sponsor for today's video, Manscaped. I know about 94% of you watching right now are guys just like me, because YouTube tells me these things. And after I finally got to try Manscaped's Perfect Package 4.0, I can confirm it's every bit as good as they say it is. So first up, I gotta show you the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, which comes with their advanced skin safe technology to reduce nicks and cuts in the places you definitely don't want nicks and cuts. And it also works in the shower since it's cordless and waterproof, which is really awesome. These LED lights on the front can tell you the battery life, which lasts up to a whopping 90 minutes. And if you tap this button three times, it goes into travel mode so that it doesn't start running in your bag on accident. The Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and Crop Reviver also help keep things fresh. And it even comes with a disposable shaving mat called the Magic Mat with some pretty wild hair designs if you want to give those a try. And for a limited time, you can get all of this plus two free gifts, being the Manscaped anti-chafing boxer briefs and the shed travel bag, all for 20% off plus free international shipping by visiting manscaped.com and using code DAKSAKE at checkout. Links to that down below. So thanks again to Manscaped, but back to the video. I've mentioned a few times just how much Augur focuses on fate, but let me just show you how extreme that truly is. I've already mentioned the line from his introduction, as well as the line from Blackbeard during the crew's introduction, but even after the Straw Hats took the knock upstream, Augur mentioned how this world is just like a giant gear, or wheel, thus hinting that fate would help them meet the Straw Hats yet again. During Impel Down, he said that Shiryu saving them from Magellan's poison must have been an act of fate, and he also said that fate was why Luffy and Blackbeard met up down there. Before Ace even fought Blackbeard, Augur mentioned that the sea train being nearby was some kind of fate because it would help them catch the Straw Hats. And then during that fight, Augur claimed that they were at another of fate's crossroads. This man literally cannot stop bringing it up no matter what situation he's in. But the last one is what stands out to me the most, because what happens when two fates collide? Or when two people with the same fate, or the same dreams, which we've seen so many times in One Piece, get in each other's way? Well, that's exactly what we would learn when Usopp and Augur finally duke it out. Because I think there's a good chance that whoever wins that battle will leave being known as the Sniper King. And doing so may even be Augur's actual dream, or at least what he believes his fate to be, which would be even more fitting, I think. And that puts him at a crossroads with Usopp, because I think there is no doubt his fate is definitely to become the Sniper King. Now, to be clear, his dream is to become a brave warrior of the sea, but that's something else entirely. His fate, however, is to become the Sniper King, and I can almost guarantee that because of one reason. Usopp lied and claimed to be the Sniper King, meaning it has to actually happen, just like all of his other lies in the story. Because as we all know, Usopp and Soge King are not the same person. And while a lot of us love to play that off as a joke, I actually think it's 100% true in this context because Usopp isn't the Sniper King yet. The entire reason Soge King existed in Eni's lobby was to basically let Usopp tap into an alter ego, one that he was able to be more confident in, especially after what happened between him and the crew. And he even tapped into this personality during Thriller Bark to essentially hype himself up. He basically had a full-on conversation with himself so that he could stay confident and beat Perona. Soge King isn't Usopp. It really is someone else, at least for right now. He isn't the Sniper King yet, but he did lie and act like he already was. So that means it absolutely has to happen eventually. And there is no better opponent to become the Sniper King against than Van Auger, who now owns the 
warp warp fruit, seemingly letting him teleport himself at will, and even doing so to others. That's kind of the ultimate trump card in a sniper battle, because even if Usopp's shot is on target, Augur can warp out of the way, thus nullifying how snipers fight to begin with. It's almost impossible to know that you're ever going to hit that target, unless you can either A, predict where they will be beforehand with future sight, or B, change your shot's trajectory after the fact. And those are both things that I think Usopp will learn to do. I'll talk about future sight later because Augur will likely tap into that as well, but changing a shot's trajectory seems kind of odd because we've really only seen that in One Piece with Vander Decken's Mark Mark Fruit. This lets him assign a target so that he could use almost anything he wanted as basically a homing missile. But I do think there's actually one other example of this power in One Piece that Oda's hidden from us in plain sight, and that's Usopp's dad, Yasop, otherwise known by his epithet, Chaser. The name Chaser itself is very likely to be a double entendre because, on one hand, we know Shanks' crew loves to drink, and some of them even have names based on drinks, or liquids in general, like Lime Juice, Bonk Punch, Lucky Roo, and Shanks even said the best sake he knows of was from his hometown. And a Chaser is usually what you drink after some questionably tasting alcohol, so that you can chase it down with something that tastes good. But I think the other layer to this name is simply that Yasop shots can chase down his enemy kind of copying Vanderdecken's powers, but likely just with hockey. And the red-haired pirates mimicking devil fruit powers with just hockey, or life return maybe, or whatever other techniques there are, is something I've talked about in a few videos already. And as for Yasop, I doubt it's the exact same thing as Vanderdecken's, since that man didn't even need to know where the target was, and the weapons could turn like 180 degrees if needed, but the idea here is still the same. Yasop will probably be able to alter the angle just enough to hit shots he normally could, or wouldn't, either to bend around a corner in case he doesn't have the line of sight, to chase a slightly moving target, or if Usopp were to ever get this ability, he might use it to pursue a target that keeps warping around. However, an easy way for Augur to counter that would just be using Future Sight. And while we don't necessarily have proof that he has this just yet, the word Augur can literally mean to foresee or predict, and we know that snipers and observation hockey kind of go hand in hand. Usopp unlocked a unique long range form of it during Dress wrote it to take down Sugar, and I think there's a chance Augur already has something just like it because of what happened during his introduction. Three seagulls were flying near the Mary right before Jaya, and then all of them got shot, with two dying immediately. Chopper was able to deduce that they got shot from a direction in which they can't even see an island, so Nami thought that that would be impossible, and Usopp even said, if that is true, with what kind of eyesight, using what kind of gun, and what kind of technique does the shooter have? They probably got shot before and just happened to fall down now. So look, if Usopp is impressed about somebody sniping and thinks that maybe someone couldn't even do that, then I feel like I'm also obligated to be kind of impressed. This seagull thing is also definitely a connection to the augurs of ancient Rome. These were religious officials who were basically tasked with observing natural signs, like birds primarily, to see if a proposed action got divine approval, basically to see if it's good or bad. And that's why after he shot those seagulls, Augur mentioned how fate is a result of your daily good and bad deeds. So given how far he shot them, from, I wouldn't be surprised if Augur already had a similar form of observation hockey to Usopp, to be honest, where he can basically sense their presence even from insane distances. But it is also likely that he at least got some help from his weapon named Senriku. This thing is basically just a long-range rifle, likely based off the blunderbuss, and while we don't know a ton about it, I'm sure it helps him shoot long-range a hell of a lot more than a slingshot or a lot of other weapons Usopp saw before that point, so maybe that's why Usopp said, what kind of eyesight or gun or technique do they have? It may not be something he's actually experienced before. So I have no doubt that that gun did help Augur here, but I still would imagine that at least by the time Usopp and Augur fight by the end of the series, they'll both have that long-range observation hockey at their disposal. And now that we're this deep in the final saga, I would have to imagine Augur's also a prime candidate to have future sight. I mean, like I said earlier in the video, the word Augur itself basically means to predict the future based on omens. If Van Augur isn't going to have future sight, then I don't know who will. This could even be a reason why he was tasked with going to Whole Cake Island without Kiji specifically. Katakuri would be the biggest threat there with Big Mom gone in Wano, and another Future Sight user could act as a potential counter to Katakuri. I'd also like to imagine how Kiji had it as well, being an ex-admiral and all, but the simple fact that Augur was there could be a clue, maybe. And that probably means that Usopp will need Future Sight as well. I mean, it would be almost impossible to imagine Usopp countering him otherwise. Even if Usopp learns Yasuo, 
Aesop's chasing abilities, Augur would still be able to see the future and dodge it. And I don't think Usopp learning future sight is really that hard to believe since he already has some form of observation hockey and the man basically predicts the future with his lies. And another potential option here, which I am fairly confident will come into play during their battle to be honest, is how Luffy disrupted Katakuri's future sight by messing with his focus when he saw him eating the donuts. Usopp is a huge trickster, even going back to his fight with Chu and the ketchup, and he always tries to throw off his opponent with his lies, like saying he has 8,000 men at his disposal. Augur has come off as nothing but calm, cool, and collected, which is exactly what you'd expect from those who excel in observation hockey, but Usopp could be the perfect counter to that with his antics. The first time Usopp ever uses future sight, or at least alters the future that Augur saw, that's definitely going to mess with Augur's psyche. I also think the environment is going to come into play in a major way when these two fight. If we go again back to Usopp's fight with Chu in Arlong Park, he only survived because he had a forest to hide in. Chu was using water shots, almost making that somewhat of a ranged battle by the way, and Usopp used the trees to protect himself. And on top of this, Usopp is very closely tied with plants in general because of the time he spent at the Bowen Archipelago during the time skip, where he learned to utilize the pop greens. These pop greens have to be a major factor against Augur, and having a forest type environment would aid him significantly I think. Because if the battle was just in a wide open space, then Usopp would just get creamed. Augur could warp out of the way to protect himself, but Usopp would basically be a sitting duck. Especially if Augur is as good at sniping as we think he is, which he definitely is. So I think this leads into an interesting discussion about Augur's warp warp fruit awakening. Because if we follow the logic of other Paramecia awakenings, then he will likely be able to affect the environment around him in some way. Like by warping it, I guess. We already know that he can warp other people because he warped Burgess to shore against the Heart Pirates, but maybe he can't warp inanimate objects right now as some kind of limit to his abilities. But the Awakening would maybe let him do so. Or if that's not it, like he's already able to warp inanimate objects as much as he wants, then maybe the Awakening would let him warp things away much further than normal. Because I would assume he has some kind of range on it like Law does with his room, which the powers are different obviously because Law has to swap places with something, but still. So imagine if Augur gets the ability to warp things across the entire planet or something. Because if the fight truly does happen in a forest-like environment, or somewhere where Usopp has stuff to hide behind, then Augur could start warping away every single tree or rock or whatever it is on the island so that Usopp has nowhere to hide. Or Usopp might just get warped away himself. We know that Haki can nullify devil fruit powers as we saw with Law and Doc Q, so maybe Usopp will need to learn that as well to stop himself from getting warped away. Or even better, and this is something I personally am dying to see, is that Usopp gets warped across the planet, or at least to another island that's really far away or something. But the catch is that maybe he's still able to shoot Van Auger. Because like I mentioned earlier, when Auger was introduced, he shot from so far that we couldn't even see the island that he was on. So imagine Usopp does the same thing to Van Auger, where he's so far away that even Auger can't see where Usopp is. This could then force Auger to warp right back to Usopp because otherwise he couldn't shoot him maybe. And this could tie back to the whole Vanderdecken and Yasop chaser thing, because if Usopp gets long range observation and the ability to make his shots chase enemies, he would basically have to go back and take on Usopp head on immediately. And the potential for their battle to develop into this kind of scenario is why I am positive that this will be the fight for the title of Sniper King. Shooting accurately from far distances and high pressure situations, all those kind of things help make a great sniper. But the battle that Augur and Usopp could have would just be way beyond that. Think about the Daddy Masterson battle in Logtown, and then ratchet that up times like a million, and you get this battle. That's the difference between a great sniper and the Sniper King. But the thing with Sniper King is that it's supposed to be meant for the King of Sniper Island, a place that Usopp said was just in your heart. And as we know, we have to take everything Usopp says kind of seriously. And being in your heart tells me that it isn't a place right now, but maybe it was or it will be. So I propose a few different options for this. The first is probably the simplest, and that's that he will create Sniper Island and become the king of it. Or become a king and and rename wherever that land is Sniper Island. Maybe the island he beats Augur on will just become known as Sniper Island, or maybe Syrup Village will be renamed that at some point because of all of Usopp's legends. Or at least Sniper Island could become an epithet for Syrup Village, much like how Brave Warrior of the Sea and Sniper King will be epithets for Usopp. If he is meant to 
marry Kai at the end, as a lot of us expect. He would be kind of a king of Surat Village at that point, so he could just lie and say it's actually Sniper Island, thus kind of making everything come true. But another fun option here is that it used to exist, but doesn't anymore. I mean, islands getting erased is something that's becoming more and more common, unfortunately, and perhaps Augur and Usopp's families could have some connection to that island. I mean, I would absolutely love it if, say, Augur's family were once the kings of Sniper Island, but got taken down by someone from Usopp's family, or vice versa. I mean, both Augur and Usopp are from the East Blue, so that kind of lines up right away, and Yasop and Usopp are kind of proof that marksmanship can be passed down through blood. Yasop has had, like, zero involvement in Usopp's Usopp's life, yet Usopp is still such an amazing sniper. So it wouldn't shock me at all if there is a connection between these two going to the past. And if both of them come from sniper families, then maybe the difference maker between them is Usopp's nose, which of course he got from his mom. And the reason I say this is a really long nose like that almost acts as a natural bodily iron sight. It's never been outright said in the story, but maybe that unironically helps him aim. I mean, Soge King even had a long nose nose, so that could be a sign in and of itself. But if you want to hear more about Usopp and maybe even his potential ties to Prince Loki of the Giants, then check out this video on the screen right now. But first, make sure you like and subscribe, and until next time, later.